Greetings and salutations to all you folks out there. I'm trying to get on a little bit of a casting schedule so that I have less excuse to just come home from work and veg out and then be lazy and unmotivated and not turn out a cast. So, today is Tutorial Tuesday. Every Tuesday, I'm going to go do something, whether it be a unit tutorial or a guideline for builds or answering some of your questions or a player review, something to teach. And today, it's going to be an analysis of static defenses. And this is like my other unit tutorials in the past. It's a whole bunch of numbers, a whole lot of information that is a little bit dry, but if you listen through it, I am 100% positive that you will learn something that you didn't know before, and it will help your game. So what I did is I've got some hives here, and I've got the four SACUs for the factions, and we're just going to go ahead and dive in and talk about the defensive structures. Now, of course, we start at T1, and of course, we start with point defense, because that is a pretty vital thing. All of the T1 point defenses are exactly identical. This goes for the land-based point defense and the anti-air turret. They have the same build time and cost, 250 mass, 2000 power, and for a T3 ACU, two seconds to build, but you know, for a T1 unit, it's gonna take a while longer to build than that. So I'm just gonna throw some of these down. They sit about the same height, so you're not gonna have any real difference between them, and if I'm not totally mistaken, they also have identical fire rates. So what we're gonna do with the point defense is when we're doing a direct comparison is I'm gonna set them on ground fire, and this way you can see the firing cycle and exactly how they compare to each other. So there it is, and yes, they all have exactly identical firing patterns. And there's your heights. So, statistics on these. 166 damage per second, which is by far the highest damage per mass of any point defense. And each of them has 1300 health. So, these are the guys that you build as regular defense, but they are outranged by T1 mobile artillery. So, that is something to keep in mind. You don't want to overbuild these because a well-mixed T1 army can easily, easily eliminate them. No contest. Um, one thing you can use them for, though, and this is something that I hear a lot of people ask about, is how do you defend against teleports? Teleports are just a broken game mechanic because you can't stop them. My friends, the answer is sitting before you. It is T1 point defense. You can pack a ton of T1 point defense into a very tiny area. As you can see, they only take up one build, uh, one build square. That is the same size as a T1 power generator. And uh, they pack in. That is approaching 700 damage per second in those four little things right there. So, a couple of shields, several point defense, and you are good to go. That is all I'm going to say about these guys. Control K them, and we're good to go. These are the anti-air turrets, and the anti-air is going to vary a bit more in its purpose because the different tech levels have different dedicated roles as far as anti-air goes. Now, all four of these are exactly the same as with the point defense. The statistics are the same for the anti-air. They each have 800 health, which is enough to survive three bombing runs, I believe. If I'm not totally mistaken, it may be two, but I think it is three. It is definitely three. And they each put out 65 damage per second, which is significantly less than the point defense, but air units have less health, so that is okay. And they all have the same firing cycle. Now, these are direct fire, non-tracking. Yes, even the Seraphim T1 anti-air, even though... Let me see if I can ground fire these. I don't think I can. Um, even though this one looks like it's flak and it has a double shot, it is not, I assure you. Here's what I'm going to do. I am going to spawn a few air scouts so that you can see exactly what these look like. You can see how the Seraphim does kind of have a strange looking shot, <laughs> but they all are the same. All right, let's get rid of these guys, which by the way, for those of you who aren't familiar with the cheat menu, Alt F2 pulls this up. If you double click a name, you can act, you can place orders as that person, and you can select any units to spawn that you want here, and that is that. 
So, I'm gonna select these and, whoops, wrong button. <gasps> Control K. All right, so that's T1. Let's move on to T2 without any further delays. We have the Cerberus turret. We have the Oblivion. Then we have the Triad. And I forget what the Seraphim one is called. It is the unpronounceable Utashala, something like that. This is where we start to see some extreme variances both in purpose and in firepower. Let me see, let me show you what the firing cycle on these look like. Uh, Cybern is a direct fire beam weapon with an incredibly high fire rate. Excellent for dealing with T1, not much good against sturdier units. It is the cheapest and lowest health, like most everything else Cybern has. Seraphim is also a beam weapon, but a sustained shot. This one is extremely powerful versus T1 and T2, and it does have the damage to deal with T3. It has zero area of effect, but it has almost zero overkill as this beam tracks to different targets mid-cycle. If you line up a couple of T1 units here, it will zap two to three in one firing cycle, depending on the health of that unit. The Triad has a slightly slower firing rate. It is the best balanced point defense. It has a fire rate that is high enough to deal with T1. It has a small area of effect which allows it to kill groups of units and it packs enough damage in its alpha shot to deal well with T2 units. So UEF has the best well-rounded point defense. And then finally, the Aeon Oblivion. This one does have a fairly significant area of effect. I will list off the exact stats in just a minute. It has a slow firing rate, which means it has a very high alpha strike. It overkills by a wide margin versus T2 or T1 units, rather, and it uh, does not have the firing rate to make it any use really against T1 units. So, if you have an Aeon fire base, you definitely need T1 to supplement your T2, and that goes for any of these. Generally, T1 is going to have higher damage per mass. And it's going to have a higher firing rate with a higher turn speed on the head of the turret. So if you have lots of units swarming your position, T1 point defense is better by far than T2 point defense. I'm going to go ahead and run through the stats on these really quickly just so you know what's going on here. The Oblivion turret has a firing rate of once every 4 seconds for a punch of 600 damage. Giving it a total of 150 DPS, 2,000 health, 528 mass cost, and 3,000 power. The I, I already went over the strengths of this. I will not bother your ears any further. The Cerberus is 480 mass, about 50, 60 less than the Oblivion. It only does 100 DPS, 50 less damage, but it fires three projectiles every point three seconds uh which is just an insanely high firing rate it, it it's basically a continuous firing cycle like a gatling gun it uh yes that is all i have to say about that and then the triad this guy costs 540 mass does 123 damage per second which is between these two and has a firing cycle of a triple shot every 1.7 seconds, totaling to 210 with a damage radius of 2. That is one thing that I did forget on the Oblivion. They both have the same. The Oblivion also has a damage radius of 2. And then finally, the Seraphim point defense. No damage radius. And it has the same damage as the UEF point defense at 123. And it costs a little bit less at 528 mass. So that is your T2 point defense. It varies both in roll and in output from the T1. The main advantage of the T2 is its range over the T1 point defense. Moving on, let's talk about anti-air. There's a lot of variety at T2. We're going to spend a few minutes here, but I think it is well worth the time. We have flak at T2. Anti-air is probably the strongest example of the fact that you should actually build all tech levels of anti-air at the same time to best deal with the variety of problems coming your way. Admittedly, T1 point defense get phase, gets phased out to a significant degree by SAMs, but I feel like it does still have its purpose as a spam unit 
if you're just getting overrun by air. All right, so T1 is direct fire non-tracking. T2 is all flak cannons, again, non-tracking, but it does have a huge area of effect, so it is extremely good at hitting units, although it may miss T3 units that have a, a tight enough turning radius to escape the area of effect if they turn after the shot is fired. I'm going to go directly with the statistics on these because to talk about these, it takes a little bit of doing. I'm not going to put air units up here to fight over this because flak is really confusing when it's firing. You won't really see the difference in them. So let's talk about Cybern first. Cybern anti-air costs 392 mass, has 152 damage output, and it's... It fires two projectiles every five, every half second for 76 damage total. It fires extremely quickly. And the area damage radius on this thing is a whopping five. However, the muzzle velocity is 20. It's not the greatest muzzle velocity on the face of planet Earth. And... Uh, that is something that you'll see change a little bit uh, as we look at the other flax. So that is the range circle. You can see that it has a range of 44. Moving on to the Aeon. If I can flip my little info card here. We have 392 mass, 71 damage output. This one fires once every 2.1 seconds with a 150 damage slug so it has a much lower slower firing cycle with much higher alpha damage it only has a three damage radius but its muzzle velocity is 30 so it's a lower area of effect higher damage with a faster projectile so this is slightly less likely to miss if a unit is maneuvering over this airspace because it has the higher projectile speed but again these are non-tracking moving on to uef i had not actually pre-looked at these ah finally a different number this one still costs 392 mass but the damage output is 156 it has a muzzle velocity of 25 which is slam in between these two and it fires one projectile every 0.8 seconds so its firing cycle is also in between these two totals out to 125 damage with a damage radius of 3.5 slightly higher damage radius than the aeon and lastly let's take a look at the seraphim and just for the heck of it let me build a t1 anti-air right beside this this has always confused the snot out of me why the T1 anti-air and the T2 anti-air basically look completely identical. And you know what? I'm going to build a T3 anti-air just out of curiosity's sake. It looks like an upgraded version. So all of the Seraphim anti-air is basically the same, which I find kind of hilarious. I'm going to leave him there because we'll talk about T3. Eh, nah, I'm going to get rid of him. That won't be for a few minutes. All right, Seraphim anti-air. Let's get off of our rabbit trail. 392 mass so they're all the same cost just the characteristics are different we got 142 damage per second with a damage with a velocity of 25 which is the same as uef fires two projectiles every 0.7 seconds with a damage radius of three so it fires slightly faster than the uef flak and it has the same area of effect as aeon so that just kind of gives you a broad overview. They have slightly different char differing characteristics, not a ton, but they are different. Cybern is going to have by far the highest area of effect. So if you have gunships to deal with, hope that you're Cybern. It's going to be damaging whole clouds at a time, much more than the other three factions. All right, T2 has a lot of options as far as stationary defense goes. And the differences are essentially cost and range. Um, it depends on how far you want to fling things and how stationary you want to be. T2 point defense can be an aggressive option. What cannot be an aggressive option is T2 stationary artillery. This is something that if you're playing in a one versus one, you will only ever build in extremely 
strategic locations centralized in the map so that you can cover huge swaths of territory with one because these things are stupidly expensive but they do have incredibly long range this is the only projectile based unit that will outrange a fat boy that is in your arsenal before like the scathis or t3 stationary artillery you basically have this in the tack launcher versus the fat boy and i think the costs vary on this so i'll go ahead and go through the statistics and we will talk about them let's start with the miasma the aeon t2 artillery and with this one we have to talk about firing variants now firing variants um basically has to do with how accurate it is there is a variable within the coding for forged alliance that determines how much basically barrel sway there is um and it's called firing randomness and the number itself doesn't mean much but you can compare it to the other factions and it will tell you relatively how little the how little the um, shot varies in location to the target. I don't know really how to describe this. My tongue keeps getting tied in knots, but I will tell you what it is and I'll move on. So Aeon T2 artillery is the most accurate. It has 1.5 firing randomness, which is not very much, but it also has the lowest area of effect. It only has two damage radius, which is the same as a T2 point defense, basically none, but it has the highest damage it does 143 damage per second and it does damage over time this is a brutal weapon versus um any single target that you want to eliminate it's not going to do broad spread damage to groups of units but if you want to eliminate specific structures or snipe things the aeon artillery is the way to go this one costs 2079 mass and as not much else to say about it it is definitely an expensive tool to use when you choose to use it you can see the range on this thing it has a substantial amount of range 128 to be exact enough to match any of the battleships except for uef let's go to cybern now the cybern t2 artillery is known as the gunther this one costs 1680 mass, which is substantially less, 400 less than the Miasma, but it does far less damage, only 87 damage per second. Um, it fires once every 20 seconds for 1750 damage total per shot, firing randomness of 2.5 almost twice the firing randomness these things are highly highly inaccurate but they have an area damage radius of four double the radius of the aeon and these are extremely good at wiping out groups of units so if you have incoming swarms to deal with and you just want to hit them at range or you want suppressive fire versus shields or just large groups, the Cybern is the way to go. UEF and Seraphim are going to fall in between these two. These are the two extremes. Let's move on to UEF. I believe all of these have a 20-second firing cycle, if I am not totally mistaken. Yes, they do. All right. This one, the Clink Hammer, costs 1890 mass, 200 more than the Gunther, 200 less than the Aeon. It has a damage radius of three smack dab in between the two and damage of 100 DPS. Again, smack dab in between the two. So this is your all around, this artillery fits any build that you want it to fit inside. So moving on to Seraphim. Once again, 20 second firing cycle. If my card will flip, there we go. 120 DPS, 1995 mass, so almost as expensive as the Aeon artillery. And it has an area damage radius of 3. So, honestly, I would pick this artillery over Aeon because this is going to have the area of effect to deal with groups of units as well as having a fairly good amount of accuracy, 1.5 the same as the Aeon. 
this is a good all-rounder. Not quite as expensive as Aeon, slightly lower damage. Let me look at the firing radius on the clean camera real quick. I forgot to do that. It is a firing randomness of two. Once again, smack dab in between these two. So, we move on from these guys. Let's get a little bit further ranged still. We're going to go to the TAC launchers. Now, these guys, if I can click on the right button here, also vary a bit, not a ton. Cybern is kind of the oddball out on this one, but we will talk about them. Now, three of these are the same price and have basically the same characteristics, so I'm going to talk about those three, and then I will talk about Cybern. We're going to talk about Aeon, UEF, and Seraphim. Aeons is called the Serpentine, and for good reason. If we observe, this TAC missile has a Serpentine flight pattern, which sometimes, not terribly often, but sometimes causes TMD to miss. And you'll notice that the longer it flies, the more it starts to kind of swerve back and forth. By the time it gets to its target, you can see it's dodging back and forth and zigzagging all over the place, and there's the impact. These cost 700 mass, 3,500 energy, so they're a fairly big investment, and then they also have to build the units inside them. And those consume, I think, one mass per tick, and like, I cannot remember how much power they take. Let me see if it'll tell me. 120 and 6, I think, was the number that flashed up there. So you do have to build these tag missiles. Range is 256, which outranges basically everything else except for T3 stationary artillery. Alrighty then, let's move on to UEF. Once again, the... Oh, these are 800 mass, so not as cheap as Aeon. I did not know that this one was cheaper. All TAC missiles do 6,000 damage, by the way, just so you know. Also has a smaller bay capacity. I wonder why. Um, 800 mass, 4,000 power, and this one fires in a straight line. Pretty uneventful happenstance. So there it is. And you'll notice that these guys have to cycle between every missile that is launched. So those two launch fairly close together. There's the Aeon. I think the Aeon might have a slightly longer, eh, just a little bit longer cycle time, I think. All right, Seraphim has a 20 capacity. You can tell that I don't use these terribly much. This one costs 825 mass, so you pay for that capacity. 4,500 power, again, a 6,000 damage missile. And let's see how quickly this fires together. I do I did know that they have different firing cycles, but I wasn't aware of how close or far apart they might be. Ah, yes, this one fires fairly close together. Closer even than the UEF, I think. So you are getting a slightly higher fire rate. And then the oddball is Cybern. Cybern tactical missile launcher is an interesting beast. It costs 850 mass, so it is the most expensive, and 5100 power, which is substantially more than even the Seraphim. It has a bank of only 10 missiles, so it has the least amount of missiles in its capacity, but the Cybern is a very, very special thing. It has four barrels inside the TAC launcher, so it can basically fire TACs tail to tail. Let's see here. There's one. There's two. That's a little bit closer than the Cybern. I thought it was actually faster than that. So it is substantially closer than the Cybern, but not terribly much. You can see it has four in the air before that one even hits over there. This is brutal for taking out targets very quickly. If you load 10 in the bank without it being scouted, you can basically wipe out your entire opponent's eco without any real issues. So very handy tool. The other thing that the Cyber Attack Launcher does that the others do not is it splits like the Cyber Mobile Missile Launchers do. And let me, um, not that one, Aeon 
Auto kills it. Where is the tactical missile defense? There it is. Create. We're going to launch over this right here. I'm doing this flying by the seat of my pants, so please don't judge me too harshly. All right, there's our launch. We'll just see how this thing splits when it gets hit. I believe the TMD can take out two of them before it hits its target if it's flying over. You can see there's the split. One down and one impacts. And I think you can actually kill the TMD pretty easily with a launch from this. So there's your differences in tack launchers. That is your longest range defensive or offensive option that comes from a fire base. There we go. One shot kill. TMD splits the missile, kills one split, and then the other two hit for a kill. Moving on to the next thing on our list. Uh, I'm not going to talk about torpedo defense. Those are fairly self-explanatory. T1 is basic sub-defense. T2 is extended range. Um, and T3 belongs to Cybern, and I talked about that in the naval video. If you haven't watched that, definitely go watch it because it is a very handy thing. We're going to go on to T3, where there's very few options, but they do need to be talked about. Um, we have the SAMs, which I'm just going to go ahead and build. These guys, T1 is direct fire non-tracking. T3 is direct fire tracking. That means that these guys will follow their targets until it is dead or the projectile expires. You cannot dodge SAMs very easily at all. Unless you're a T3 Air Scout flying over one of the uh, lower turning radius ones. And sometimes the missiles will loop around it and not kill it immediately, but it does eventually die. So, moving into this, I have said so, so many times this cast, and I should definitely stop myself from doing so. Um, the Aeon is the Transcender. Costs 800 mass. I have a strong feeling that all of these are going to cost the same thing. It fires two projectiles every half second followed by a 3.1 second reload for a total firing cycle of 3.6 seconds outputs 333 damage per second muzzle velocity of 45 damage radius of 1.5 now the damage radius is something that they added somewhat recently to the faf balance and i actually do love it because it allows sams to do greater damage to swarms of strat bombers you do not necessarily uh, auto win just because you clump up a bunch of strats and hurl them at the other player. If you have them stacked up too closely, Sam's will fire into the bunch and kill your strat bombers five or six at a time, greatly reducing your numbers. And I love this feature. It is a great addition. So that is that one. And I said, so again, <laughs> I'm going to have to sponsor that word. I'm going to glance through these. I believe the cost and the damage output is the same. Yes, 800 mass, 333 damage per second output. The only difference is the firing cycles. This one also has a 3.6 second firing cycle with a 45 muscle velocity, same damage radius. Um, just going to flip through here and see if these are all the same. I should have checked that before. The same, the same, and the same, except for... Aeon is the oddball out. This is basically a direct shot to the face to any unit that dares touch it. These guys have a slow tracking projectile. The Seraphim projectile does track, but it is traveling so fast that should it miss, it cannot turn fast enough to actually come back to the target. It has a whopping muzzle velocity of 100 has the same firing cycle and damage as the others, uh, 333 and 3.6 firing cycle, but this thing is brutally effective at just knocking things out from a great range because as soon as a unit enters this blue circle and trips the SAM, it fires and the shot impacts like right here, flying in. It's bam. So this is a great preemptive striker. Seraphim is... Uh, T3 anti-air is awesome. You can quote me on that. Let's talk about the only exceptional defensive structure, and that would be, wait for it, 
The Ravager. UEF has a T3 point defense, and we definitely need to talk about that. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the Ravager costs a whopping 1,800 mass and 16,000 power. It is an extremely expensive structure, but it does 328 damage per second, 2,600 damage per firing cycle. This thing is a beast. It is a T4 killer and not much good at anything else unless you're reaching out to strike at incoming T2. It just hopelessly overkills and or completely misses T1 units because it does have a fairly high firing randomness for a point defense and a slow moving projectile that kind of tends to stray a little bit. Muzzle velocity of 32 has a range of a whopping 70. You can see it reaching all the way out there, which means if you build a dozen or so of these, you can kill the direct fire T4s, usually before they even damage your base substantially, as long as you have a shield or two over it. They'll close range, they'll get off a couple shots, and then die. The disadvantage to the Ravager is that it fires on an eight second firing cycle, and it overkills horrendously on lower tier targets. So if you waste that shot, this point defense will easily get run over, easily get run over by T1 and T2 units. You have to mix in T2 point defense, possibly even T1 point defense to use this effectively because if you don't, they'll swarm you and you'll die. One other thing to note about this is it does have an area of effect this does have a one damage radius. Not a whole lot, but it is significant. I've been debating this entire video whether or not to cover the T3 stationary artillery because technically, technically it is stationary defense, but it is also a game ender. I think I'll go ahead and do the game enders just to get it all over with in this one video. If I can build the things, there's not a whole lot of buildable space here. You can see the enormous cost. I'm actually maxing out the Paragon. Yes, folks, it's possible. 200 hives building a T3 artillery can actually max out a Paragon. Now you know. Let's build a Duke. Let's build a Havatham, whatever, Seraphim, you have strange names, and an Emissary. And just for good measure, we will leave... Holy cow, that's so much build power. <laughs> Watching the drones is just mesmerizing. Spinning around in a little circle, weaving a web of red. Alright, enough rabbit trails. Um, building the Salvation, which will actually take a few seconds to complete because it costs a buttload. And yes, that is an exact scientific term. It is a buttload of mass. Looking at the statistics on these, these vary pretty wildly or widely, depending on your take on the term, in cost and ability. Let's start with the Cybran. The Disruptor is the cheapest. It only costs 69,000 mass. It also has the lowest range, only 700, which is still far bigger than this map. I should have picked a bigger map so that I could show you the actual effective range, which would be somewhere out here, I think. This one does 460 damage per second with an area damage radius of 9. 9 area of effect is a huge explosion. This thing is phenomenal at taking out large swaths of territory. The, you'll think the shot missed you, it'll impact, and it will still damage you. 46,000 damage per shot with a firing cycle of 10 seconds. So it fires pretty dang close together for a T3 artillery. Add some T3 P gens around this and you'll get, I think it's a 40% firing rate increase. So it would be a six second reload. It's not quite a Scathus, it's farther range, but lower rate of fire. And you can see the huge area of effect. You can also see how inaccurate it is. It has a firing randomness of 0.75, which may not sound like much, but once you're traveling this distance, it's actually a pretty large variance in where the shot is impacting. Wait for one more to hit, and we'll have a pretty good idea. Ah, those two are actually close together. We'll leave him firing and then come back and look at how big the black circle is. Let's move on to the Duke. 
The Duke is the second shortest range. We're comparing 300 range to seven or 700 range to 750, so slightly farther. One projectile every 10 seconds, the same thing, but the damage radius is only six. Three less area of effect, and it costs 3,000 mass more at 72,000 mass. It has a 55,000 or 5,500 damage impact coming from 550 DPS. And I'm going to go ahead and fire all of these actually so we can see what their firing cycles are. That is the UAF. I'm going to go ahead and preemptively turn on the Aeon and the seraphim so we can go ahead and see our spreads here alrighty firing variance on the UEF is only 5.25 which is significantly less about 20 percent or 25 percent less than the cyber and artillery so this is gonna be a lot more accurate let's talk about the emissary the emissary is the Aeon version and it is much more expensive well, a bit more expensive 73,000 mass and it is um, 600 damage per second firing once every 20 seconds for a much longer reload time but it comes with a 12,000 damage alpha strike which is huge it has a low area of effect at 5 but a very long range at 900, which is a substantial amount more than the Duke. And this artillery cannot break shields very effectively. It will break one or two shields, but a combination of the long firing cycle and the low area of effect makes it pretty ineffective at killing any more than, I would say, four Aeon T3 shields. <clears throat> Once you get up to five or more, it's going to have trouble breaking them. The Duke is very good at breaking shields and the cybern with the high area of effect the more shield you build the worse off you are it just obliterates shields and that is all i have to say about the emissary firing randomness of 0.35 which is almost half the firing randomness of even the uef we'll go look at the uh, damage circles in a minute moving on to the seraphim t3 artillery installation this one has 500 damage per second, costs 70,000 mass, which is in between the UAF and Cybern, has 825 range in between Aeon and UAF for the second longest range, and it has an area damage radius of 7, one more than UEF, two less than Cybern, and it has almost uh, slightly less firing randomness than the Cybern one does. 0.675 as opposed to 0.75 so this is up to high splash high variance of shots the firing cycle is once every 10 seconds the aeon is the only oddball out and uh, that is the sum of it so let's look at our damage circles here this is cybern you can see how big the variance of shots is here this is uef i think yes uef you can see this is a very tight circle here. And then the Seraph... That's Aeon, sorry. The Aeon has basically three impact points right there. Very tight grouping, not a whole lot of difference in the shots. And then Seraphim, all over the place. Seraphim kind of looks like the Cybern one does. Not quite as bad, but it's getting there. Alright, that wraps up the T3s. The T3.5, the Salvation, let's launch him. This is the Rapid Fire Artillery that is insanely expensive and should be classified as a T4, in my humble opinion. This one belongs to Aeon. It is the Salvation, the coveted Ultra Unit that everyone wants to build on Settons. This thing fires insanely fast. 36 projectiles once every three seconds, which it fires as a clump. You can see it's got a split shot. There's the projectile, and there's the split. Dink, it has a master split, and then a second split, and impact for rolling damage. These shots do 7,920 damage over 36 projectiles. 
So I'm not going to try to do the math. Ah, it's listed for me. 220 damage per projectile times 36. And they all impact pretty close together, and each projectile has a damage radius of 2. So this is blanket damage if you ever saw it. It takes a little while to break the shields because the damage is so spread out. But once it accumulates enough damage to take down the shields, you're going to see it will take down all of the shields in this whole area. And then the blanket fire will land five or six shots in the time it takes to recharge the shields, by which time all of your shield generators are dead. This is a masterful endgame weapon. Unfortunately, it does not have enough range to be classified as infinite. It only has, and I say only, 1800 range. So you can technically outrange a Salvation on a 40k map if you build the Salvation all the way in one corner and you can't hit the other corner. So basically it covers an entire 20k map and 90% of a 40k. So that is the Salvation. And since I'm on the subject, let's talk about the Maver. Uh, the Maver gets a lot of hate. Some of it deserved, some of it not so much. Um, you can form your own unique opinion about it. I will simply give you the statistics and show you the firing pattern. The Maver is effectively, and I do say effectively, an infinite range unit. It is basically the same as the Salvation on a 40k. If you get on an 81k map, which no one plays, you can build a Maver in one corner and you can see the range circle on the other end of the map, but I am pretty positive that it can still hit literally the entire map. Ah, there's our little network of red again. So you build this and you can hit anything on the map and the game is over. But there's a lot of people who don't think that's the case. The Maver is actually an extremely accurate artillery. It has the lowest firing randomness of any of the artilleries at 0.22. It is an incredibly precise artillery. The problem is that you're shooting over a range of 40K. So by the time your projectile travels way far away, that little tiny 0.22 degree difference at the beginning translates into a fairly significant difference of impact on the other end. So I would just encourage everyone to look at it from that respect. Basically, if you make the Maver any more accurate than it is, it will so totally and precisely obliterate the map on anything smaller than a 40k that it would just end every game instantaneously if you built it. So it's a tricky to balance unit. That's all I got to say. Uh, this thing costs a beastly 224,000 mass and 5,994,000 power, which is just obscene. It does 1,500 damage per second, one projectile every eight seconds for 12,000 damage on impact with a area damage radius of seven. And you can see here, this is my attack spot and the maver is pretty much hitting spot on it is no less accurate than the cybern artillery it's pretty close right here and it's firing at twice the distance as the cybern but you can see how how big the area of effect was for the cybern artillery here the maver is firing twice as far and it's in a tighter firing pattern than the cybern artillery was so i think the maver is in a good place um Maybe you can disagree. I'm not going to argue if that is your opinion, but I think that it is fine. I did not give you the cost on the Salvation. The Maver is 224,000 mass for 1,500 damage per second. The Salvation is 202,000 mass, slightly cheaper, with more damage per second, 2,554 damage but it doesn't have the infinite range, which is a lot of what you're paying for on the Maver. So that is the T3 artillery in not quite a nutshell. I actually went on a decent bit about that. I'm not going to talk about nukes. Nukes are pretty much self-explanatory. You can figure those out on your own. 
The only other unit that I need to talk about is the Novax. Another unit that some people love and some people hate. And um, I'm going to talk about it and hopefully shed some light on what you need to do to actually make this a useful unit. I'm trying to find... There it is. Defense Satellite. It is classified as an air unit, which is kind of weird. But also makes sense because it is in the air. Um, eh, where can I build you? I don't want to take all the time. Ah, I can reclaim. I have 200 hives. What am I talking about? Bam! Salvation's gone. Basically instantaneous. Let's do Novax. Ding. Costs about the same as a fat boy. So, the deal with the Novax is it costs... I actually need to be in a different category. 28,000 mass, which is about the same as a fat boy, and three Novak centers equals one T3 artillery. So, my rule of thumb is if I'm going to build a Novax, it essentially does the job of a T3 stationary artillery. So, if I build one, I'm going to build three. And that is the same mass investment as a T3 stationary artillery, but you get progressive damage out of it. So it's actually not a bad deal. So keep that in mind when you're building these three Novaxes equals a T3 artillery. And you can say all you want that, oh, a, no a Novax is so much worse than a T3 stationary artillery. If you're not building three, you don't have an accurate comparison. So build three compare them to a stationary artillery, and then talk to me. Um, as far as the damage goes, they do 200 DPS, which is not a huge amount, but three of them actually has close to the same damage per second as a T3 artillery. They have a one area of effect, and they have one beam every 20 seconds lasting for a few seconds. Total firing cycle... I think is 4,000 damage, but I'm not 100% sure. You can see it right there. There's a Novax. This thing is brilliant at taking out Navy, especially if it's Cybern. If they don't have mobile shields, you can take out one cruiser per firing cycle, or you can harass destroyers pretty dang effectively with the satellite hanging overhead. And since the satellite can't be shot down, it is a worthy investment. Um, it provides its own intel. It has a fairly large vision radius. It has, uh, totally forgot what I was going to say there. Pass over that. That was a verbal typo. Um, it cannot break through shields very well. That is what I was going to talk about. Um, it has a problem breaking through shields. That is the Achilles heel of the Novax, and it can be solved with more Novaxes or a T3 artillery. And you may be saying, but that's a huge investment. It is, but let me explain my reasoning to you. The Novax has instantaneous retargeting. It can flip, 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 flip between targets. Oh, let me catch it in the middle of a firing cycle to show you how fast it swaps. Um, you, what you do is you can build a T3 stationary artillery, and then build a Novax, which basically costs the same as a fat boy. So you're building it, and it's off mapping. Oh well. Um, you're basically building a T3 artillery and a fat boy. You send the Novax over, and you pre-target the Novax on all of the shield generators of your opponent, and then you take down the shields with the T3 stationary artillery. The T3 stationary artillery will do a lot of damage once the shields are down, but it may not necessarily kill all of the shield generators. So when the shield generators came back up, the T3 shield, the T3 uh, artillery has to take them all out all over again. The Novax is pre-targeted and precisely, precisely accurate. And as soon as the shield goes down, it will start its firing cycle and zap, zap, zap. There go all your shield generators. And then the shields aren't there to recharge and the T3 artillery can take out everything. Additionally, if you're going to be building two or three T3 stationary artillery in a game, if you have a long turtle game or a huge map where you've hit a stalemate and you're trying to break the other person, for the price of three stationary artillery, you're getting nine, nine Novaxes, which is basically unstoppable. 
if you have all nine of those Novaks in one spot, you can just pre-target the ACU and it's dead as soon as the shields go down. So it's a very precise weapon with a different niche slot than the T3 artillery occupies, but it is an incredibly useful unit and one that if buffed, because people say that the Novaks need to buff so more people use it. If you buff this unit, it is going to be stupidly OP. There is no argument that you can make to me that would convince me otherwise. Um, the Novax is already decently powerful. Even if you increase the price to the same as a T3 artillery and give it the same damage as a T3 artillery, it will be just obscene the amount of carnage that comes to pass underneath this unit. So, leave the Novax alone, use it a bit more, build three of them, don't build one. That is my advice to you. All right, that went a little bit longer than expected, but that is all of the stationary attack units. And hopefully that gave you some ideas, answered some questions, and or taught you something that you can use in a game to win, pulverize the other people, kill the competition, whatever you got to do, Subcom is a game about winning. Hopefully my stumbly application did not ruin it for you, but I thank you if you managed to watch this entire video. I am going to be putting out two casts this week. This is going to be a three video week if it kills me. And hopefully I'll be back on track for the weeks that follow. As always, thank you so much for watching, guys. I will see you in the next cast.